Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. The boys are back in town, the boys are back in town. Hello and welcome back to, well, what is the Adam and Rose show, which hasn't been around for some time. And I'm delighted to say Rose on the line. We finally hooked up, Rose. How are you? Good, man. How you been? Yeah, really good. And uh, thank you to all the Impact Loungers uh, who have been asking where we've gone and where we disappeared to. I know I sometimes pop up and uh, do some of these interviews, but uh, yeah, this was this is my first love getting back to talking about what's going on in Impact and, and not to the wrestlers themselves. Although, do make sure you do check out the interviews I've been doing. Uh, the last one was this week uh, with Ethan Page, who's uh, one cool dude. So, uh, oh, oh, by the looks of it, is going to be doing some big things in Impact going forward. So, anyway, um, I suppose we'll start off with a bit of an apology to, to the, the loungers. Just uh, because we we haven't been around for, well, it must be two months now, Ro, two months. Like uh, I think with our last show was the super show well, that we had jumped on with Trent and Kyle, if I'm not mistaken. So that would have been end of year stuff. Yeah, so it's so nearly three months. So if you haven't heard us before, uh, for a long time, Ro and I were doing the Impact Review before Carl and Trent uh, came back to take that over. Uh, then we started our, our own Adam and Rose show, which was a weekly discussion, picking up on the news, those kind of things. As uh, we've been away for so long, I think it's only fair that maybe we don't do that this week, but we maybe just give, a, I suppose, a view on what we've been thinking about Impact recently, what's going on and what we want to see coming forward. Forward. So it's going to be slightly different to the usual show. So, you know, if you like today, great. Hit subscribe. Check us out next time. If you don't like today, check us out next time anyway, because it will be different going forward when we, we get back into the, the minutiae of what's going on. Uh, I, I know that uh, Kyle this week has already done a, a bit on Ali. Um, so that's the kind of news items that would usually be picking up. Uh, we, although we will talk about that during this show, we just want to make sure that uh, if you are longtime fans of ours, that we are going to be going back to our roots fairly shortly. And and really, that that's part of the reason why I've been a bit incognito over the last couple of months is that I haven't fallen out of love with Impact, but just wrestling. Uh, I kind of been so busy and I, I don't know, uh, reading the, the dirt sheets and those kind of things hasn't inspired me that much. But having talked to Ethan this week, Killer Cross a couple of weeks ago, you know, it's kind of rekindled my love and I watched Impact this week, got back up to speed with things. And yeah, raring to go again. But um, I suppose before we start, I, I'm gonna. Ro and I were, were having a bit of a discussion beforehand about what we've been thinking about Impact, and I think it's fair to say, Ro, that we haven't been glowing about the product. Would that be fair? Yeah, I mean, I just kind of just thought, and I mean, I know the news that happened, um, what almost towards the end of last year when we found out they weren't going to be on Pop, that you know that kind of. Uh, took the air out of the balloon so to speak but i really thought 2018 was the rebuild in 2019 they were going to really just kind of launch off and i really haven't felt like that you know i find myself liking some some of the things and i get it i'm not gonna like every single thing but it's just like man you know and even to and i know people hate to talk about them sometimes but even with the viewership you see i mean i mean i i just don't know yeah, I mean, I mean, the viewership shouldn't bother us. It, it bothers me as well, to be fair, but it shouldn't bother us because all we should care about is that they keep producing wrestling on TV and all, all the internet and we can keep on watching it, enjoying it. So it, it shouldn't hurt us. But uh, it's funny that internet sticks and stones do break my bones at times. You know, that I do get upset that they've only got 15,000 viewers on Twitch or whatever it may be. Who knows what the real viewership is? But, you know, I really hope that, that they get onto a good TV network and, and continue to do the Twitch stuff, but also get a bit more mainstream because I think really that's what you need to be a, a credible show. Now, um, we'll we'll dive into what we're liking and what we're not in, in a second, but I just want to remind everyone that if this is your first time stopping by, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, I'm sure you would have already hit subscribe if you've been listening to Carl and Trent. Those guys have been doing an absolutely amazing job. Um, hopefully, Ro and I might appear for another super show very soon on there. Uh, you know, I certainly uh, have thrown in my hat into the ring for when uh, either Carl or Trent can't make it. So you never know. I might be coming up on, on the review show soon. So do hit the subscribe button and make sure you check out all the other videos that, that we've done previously. So... Um, why don't we start off with well, what, what we used to do? We used to read out the comments. This has been so long; there hasn't been been many comments. Um, but I did want to read one out from um, Humble Beast, who was, who was very kindly uh, spoke 
I've sung my praise, I should say, on the Ethan interview last week. Uh, but he brought up some really good points about, you know, having great heels within the company, but maybe not as many good faces in the company. And I think that he's most probably hit the nail on the head. And, and I would say that Ro and I are also very guilty of this, that, um, you know, whenever we get bored of a, with, of a face, we always say, turn him heel, turn him heel. And there's very, very few occasions where we say, oh, we'd like to see that person as a face. So I, I think uh, the, the humble um, humble beast is absolutely right. There are too many good heels and not enough good faces at the moment. So we'll cover that in this show as well. One of the other things that we used to do, and Ro, I, I didn't prepare you for this, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, is, is that we always used to have a trivia question to get people to answer that. So I, I've actually prepared one this week. So there you go. All right, good. So I have got a <laughs> trivia question to get the ball rolling, as we always used to have. So make sure you leave it in the YouTube comments. We're going to read these out every time, every week, just to tell you who's got it right, those kind of things, and also your comments. If you like the show, make sure you do leave something down below uh, this, this YouTube video. So the trivia question I've got is, what connects the debut of Drew Galloway and MVP in Impact Wrestling, or TNA as it was? So it's as simple as that. What is the connection between the debut of MVP and the debut of Drew Galloway? Do you know that one, Ro? I don't need to tell me, but do you know what it is? <laughs> Not even a clue. I'm trying to think right now, but I, I can't can't think of anything at this time. Fair enough. All right, then. Anyway, let's get uh, on to something that did happen in the news this week. And I want to talk about the roster, really, um, at Impact at the moment. Because, as I said, both of us have been a, a little bit disillusioned with wrestling. You you maybe more so with Impact. Me, just wrestling in general. What do you think of the, the people who have signed deals, those who haven't signed deals, and um, the, the shape of the company going forward at the moment? Uh, let, let's talk specifically about the Alley one. Because I know a lot of people tagged me in on Twitter. Thank you very much for doing that. A lot of people left comments on, on Kyle's video saying that, uh, obviously, I had strong opinions on Ali. But what, what do you think about the Alley situation? Um, you know, I don't want to kind of regurgitate what I said because I had um, jumped on clock, clock cleaners and actually went on and it uh, went on uh, in de- deep detail about it. Um, I think my my biggest takeaway was just like like we don't know if they chose not to resign her or she didn't want to sign a new deal. We'll never know. There's two sides to each story. But mainly, I just feel like while it's not going to hurt the company, like any losses and hurt the company, losing homegrown talent for me. You know, being an Impact fan, I think that's the stuff. It's like, dang, because I feel like I like to be able to watch when we see some of these people become stars and under the Impact umbrella. It's like, dang, Impact created that person. Where you know, versus when a when they pull somebody that's a, made their name elsewhere and they you know headline or whatever like that. I'm just not as invested. So I feel like losing her like that. I feel like we lost a homegrown person, and I think that kind of always stinks. Just going on that about losing a homegrown person, the thing that really bothered me is that the number of fans who who loved her in Impact Wrestling, I always used to say, wait till you see when when she gets more like her character Cherry Bomb. Now, as far as I can say, Cherry Bomb, blah blah blah. Honestly, we never saw it in Impact. We we she never showed us anything in Impact to suggest that she was a good wrestler. Now, a character. I had a few gripes about it. I felt that they maybe dragged out the bunny bit too long, her being the newbie. And she didn't really have that long as the champion, as a competent wrestler. She was still kind of phasing out, I'm I'm new to this. So for me, I think they did pretty much everything they could with her. And, and she never showed any real signs of improvement. So so for me, look, I, I, I if you just stayed on, great. I don't think it's a great loss. But what really stings me, what, what really, to me, I can't stand it. And, and, and she went bully Ray uh, on us here. She started, I think, she, she left and slated impact a little bit, saying that she was never really realised her potential, what she could really do and those kind of things. For Christ's sake, Ali, I'm not being funny. You were there for, what, however long? Three, four years? I, d- I don't know how long you are there. You you had the title twice. You are involved in every major storyline in the impact... Oh, sorry, in the knockouts division. To say that you haven't had a chance is absolute bullshit. Uh, so, so for me, whether whoever's decision it was, and all the dirt she's suggesting it, it's actually Impact's decision to let it go. 
further turn around and say that leaves a bad taste in my mouth and irrespective of how good she was and she did carry the division for some time irrespective of that i, I just hate it when people leave and then say that i'm going to a company that that, that that's going to let me be who i want to be i, I just think it, it's nonsense you know look look at laurel van ness she didn't leave with a with with a bad taste in her mouth she you know she left and said i want to go and, uh, and be on wwe no problems with that i wouldn't care if ali said i want to go and be on aew uh, or I've got release, I've got nothing else to do. But to turn around and say that Impact didn't give you a chance, come on, honey, that's just bullshit. Well, I think, though, wasn't there a criticism on LVN that she was just trying to buy her time, hoping that she was getting noticed in the moment that they showed interest, that's when she jumped? So I think, you know, yeah, I don't like when people trash the company when they go out, but then, too, what I'm starting to see or what I'm starting to believe like this, and I'm not defending it in any kind of way. A lot of these people who are departing, like say even when you think back like Trevor Lee's and some others, they came in when the old regime was in. So they kind of had a relationship with the old regime. So maybe, you know, the things were a little bit clear about what their role was going to be moving forward, etc. And then, you know, now that we have Don at the helm, like Don has his vision. He has his people that you know he has plans for the people who he inherited like some of them he might see things for others he might not there's a lot of people that i'm pretty sure once their contracts expire they're not going to be resigned because they're not part of the vision and still you know you still shouldn't you know be like that but then too i just always compare it to you know when you work for a company and new management comes in normally new management is going to want their people in place you know they look at you like you have no loyalty to them because you were under the, an old you know, old management. So I think sometimes too that plays a role. But once again, too, I like I said, I had to look back at the message because when I first seen it, I kind of just glazed, glossed over it, I should say. But that's the thing that I I feel, and I'm not saying this is Impact's fault, but why is it that people feel that they can, you know, say something negative towards the company without any repercussions? And what I'm saying as far as repercussions is like. You know, when people leave WWE, they careful, they're careful with some of the words they say because they don't want to close that door about potentially coming back. Whereas with Impact, I mean, we've seen people trash a company and end up coming back. Like, you know, there's not that fear of like, oh, anything's going to bad is going to happen. So it just makes you wonder they look at Impact as, you know, they don't respect Impact. Yeah, absolutely right. And Buddy Ray's been a perfect example of that. You know, a number of times he's left and come back after slating the company unreal but anyway um t- talking of which uh, i saw that alberto was in the news this week uh, apologizing to wwe <laughs> and and basically groveling and saying that he's been he's going to be welcomed back so uh there you go you, you can slate wwe and uh, as long as you've got uh a market out there for you in this case uh the hispanic market i'm guessing that they want to tap into by bringing him back then you can say what you want as long as you apologize publicly yeah um, but yeah but guess what though i i can i can rest assured if he were to come back he wouldn't be winning a world title they'd probably have him jobbing out on one of those uh what is it main event or wherever ec3 competes on i, I hope he does <laughs> i really hope they do <laughs> job him out that'd be hilarious uh anyway um so yeah so, so enough about ali anyway so good luck to you but uh, on the change of management thing that you just mentioned there you know don and and scott have been in in charge now since bearing for glory a year and a half ago so it's not like they haven't you know they don't fit in with the vision and it, it does i do question the vision actually we'll come on to this in, in a second remind me to come talk about the vision because obviously where ali has been involved and where rosemary and sue young are still involved is very lucha or very you know hokey b b horror movie kind of kind of you know uh, staging producing and, and i love that stuff and I, i'd really like to think that is going to be part of their vision you know they've had it with eddie edwards and ove as well and, and a lot of other things so to say that they don't she doesn't fit in with the vision i, I don't know I, I just don't get it i i don't know what she's going to do in awe aew sorry and and i wish them all the best and i'll most probably watch it if, if we can get it in the uk i will watch it when they finally announce what it is because all the moment is they've got a roster um so when they when they do launch i will watch it and, and wish them the best of luck but uh, Ali, I, 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 I'm very disappointed in her. Um, talking of knockouts, who I'm very disappointed in, uh, welcome back, Madison Rain. Um, <coughs> as you know, her last run, I, I was pretty angry about because they really made her look so strong, and she shouldn't be booked like that. And they're bringing her back in, and I just really hope they don't repeat the same mistakes. Um, and 
I know nepotism is everything, but at the same time, you know, she's got nowhere else to go. You know, she, she's fallen out with Ring of Honor. WWE are never going to want her. So she's got nowhere else to really go. So they're bringing her back. And I just hope that she kind of fills that almost Alicia Edwards role of being a character, but, but someone who who doesn't really, you know, um, get anywhere towards the title. And what gives you... Well, go ahead. I didn't know if you were finished with your, with your statement. No, that's me. That's me, yeah. That's me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, your thoughts on Madison? Are you glad that she's back? Hell no. <laughs> uh, look, let me die. Uh, let me just dive in. Like, let me ask you, what would give you the indication now, mind you, she left to uh, for an opportunity to compete at the May Young Classic, which, you know, she didn't advance. So that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. She then goes to Ring of Honor. And I think due to creative differences, um, I don't know if it, it might have been a mutual party. So, of course, she comes back to Impact, you know, where that's home, you know, safe place. Okay, fine. What makes you believe that anything will be different from the last time? You know, we had thought when she was on board then her role was, and I think for the time she was doing that where she was putting over knockouts, but we had always thought, hey, if she's serving the role of, you know, kind of like that knockout with the name recognition, helping building, help building the you know, some of the younger knockouts that they have plans for. But we've seen her beat Tessa twice, beat Taya, you know, and then she puts over Sue Young. And, I mean, it didn't really help Sue Young any because we've seen where Sue Young is now. So her coming back, and you look at the division now, now that we just lost Ali, and I know Ali towards the end, they weren't really, um, you know, she was a really strong threat in the title picture. Like, is, I don't I don't see why not she wouldn't be in the title picture. I mean, there's nothing that gives me any indication that something's going to be different from the last time, I should say. You're most probably right. And and the thing is, I, the only good thing is they can't really retread that. You know, I'm a, a mother of two. This is my last shot, uh, you know, of catching the title. They can't go down that route again. But, you know, maybe they'll find some other underdog story for her. But I, I just hope she goes out there and she gets... Jordine Grace just beats the shit out of her. <laughs> I mean, they really, sweet. you you know what would be would be cool, if, like, especially if they had, a, um, I don't know, and I'm sure they're probably going to sign some more knockouts, but, you know, kind of if you have that um, apprentice and a, a teacher type thing, and then, you know, you you uh, blow the feud off where you have, you know, whoever is up under her tutelage face her, and then something like that, where it's like, in a sense, what they always say, the passing of the torch, so to speak, but I, I really still think she's going to be part of the title picture so yay <laughs> yay great um so just looking at the women's division let, let's, let's just go down it look back a year ago where it is now do you think it's in a better position with the changes that are happening the people they've got on there those kind of things uh, how do you feel about it and, and i'm going to give you the names off the top of my head are in it so you've obviously at the top you've got you know tyre tessa um rosemary sue young jordine uh, Hogan, anyone else I've forgotten about in there? Alicia. Alicia, does she even, I yeah. suppose she does wrestle occasionally. And, and then I guess Scarlett. Oh, and Scarlett, of course, yeah. So so what do you think of, of, of the knockout division? Do you think it's in a good place? I think with the roster assemble, assembled, they could be getting more than what they're getting. I think for the time being, I think there's such a rush. Sometimes we see where... All of a sudden, they want to thrust this person into, you know, the role of being the number one face challenging the hill, or vice versa. And then after, you know, say if the title changes hands, there's nothing to go from there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You look at since Ty has been champion, for example, you know, she's defended the title once against Tessa. And then she's been involved with whatever Johnny's been in. So the title's kind of taken a back seat. And there's really nobody up in line outside of Jordan. You know, and she's really kind of like the de facto uh, person next. Because you look at a Kiera. I mean, do we really think Kiera's ready yet? I mean, we'll never know because she hasn't really been put in that position. She's, it's, you know, her, she's been stuck in the undead realm thing, you know, what it seems like forever. Sue Young, I mean, I don't know what happened to Sue Young. She just by the wayside uh alicia alicia's always been um 
presented as you know somebody who works you know a matcher there but really kind of tied in with eddie stuff and then finally scarlet you know we're still waiting her to see wrestle and her first match is going to be against disco so yeah i just feel like they can be getting more out of it um i really feel each division needs you know a couple of people three or four threats to the title that you could kind of rotate in and rotate out oh and tessa you know tessa's feuding with gail kim you know so i i just kind of just feel like they could they could be getting more out of the division than than what they're getting at this time i I think it's a good feud for tessa by the way i I think it takes away from the title for a little bit and it's a good feud for it It keeps her on telly so i'm not too disappointed by that i I forgot to um mention the other two additions to the the knockouts division which have been quite remarkable and that's uh Tyre's breast augmentation my word uh, she's really pumped those boys up hasn't she since we last uh, doing this this show <laughs> congratulations to those good luck johnny impact <laughs> um yeah so um it, it yeah the, i think the knockout division is is in an all right place but you're right uh, there doesn't seem to be any focus on the title at the moment since tessa fell away it's kind of just meandered, isn't it? Everything has been about Ali in the dark realm. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. But, uh, you know, I, I think that they're going to have to do something because it's just drifting at the moment, isn't it? That Other than the undead realm stuff, the women's division has just drifted. And and by the way, you mentioned uh, Disco Inferno. I think he's been hilarious. It, that is one thing I've really enjoyed over the last few months is Disco Inferno and uh, his segments. Do you know what it reminds me of, actually? And uh, this is most probably something not to say when you're talking about Impact TNA. He reminds me of Jeff Jarrett against China, almost. Although China was obviously billed as a powerhouse. But, you know, that kind of misogynistic uh, women should be in the kitchen. I really hope it leads to a uh, a good housekeeping match. I, I would honestly mark out like crazy if Disco and Scarlet have a good housekeeping match. You know, I wouldn't be opposed to that, but I just think Scarlet could be a body used in the knockouts division at this point. So I would rather her kind of finish this up and be able to put her in the place because I've seen her wrestle some. And I mean, she can fit. And I mean, it's it's needed right now, you know, because like you said, you know, I get and, and what they've done a great job of, and especially in the past, is where for the knockouts, they're able to have views that don't revolve around the title. I'm not a fan of the whole Gail Kim Tessa one only because I don't think Tessa gains anything from beating Gail Kim. And then and, and if they let Gail Kim beat Tessa, I mean, I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility. But I, I just really think just right now we need some kind of strong contenders. The, st- the stuff that I miss, and I kind of hope maybe down the road we kind of get it. I miss when they used to do some of the, um, you know, the fatal four-way matches. Or uh, I think they used to have the, I forgot the term of it, but it was like a gauntlet. And like all the knockouts would compete and then you know the winner either wins the number one contendership or wins the title like things like that so we're kind of um reintroduced to these people that are not only in the division but are threats to the title yeah absolutely all right uh time is is moving on so let's let's talk about the men next and before we do that um obviously there's been some there's not been that many departures that I can think of. No, no one significant, but there's a couple of people I want to to highlight who've come in, who whether we rate or not. I just want to see what you think of them. Um, but there's also a rumor going around that uh, WWE have, are done with EC3 already, um, and they're not going to keep him around. So I don't know if you've heard that rumor. And, and what do you yeah, think about him? And what do you think about him potentially coming back? Do you think he would, or do you think he'd go to AEW? That's a good question. I think he would come back only if they promised him he'd be pushed like how he was pushed before. And if that's the case, then I wouldn't want him back. I really think people who leave, you know, I'm not one of these people who, you know, are going to crap on somebody leaving, you know, but sometimes the grass isn't always greener, as, you know, people would say. So if you're going to come back, you have to earn, you know, earn it, work your way back up. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, he left. The, the thing, the bad taste that he left in my mouth was the way he left. You know, he probably benefited the most. You know, I've you know from a guy who you know his first go around in the E, they didn't see much in him, and Impact made him a star, a household name, and he gets pissed because he has to take a back seat after being in the main event for you know what two plus years. Like to me, that's not the type of people that you want. You want team players. So to go over there and strike out and then to come back, and I mean if he's can't comes back welcomed in open arms and thrust it back in the main event i don't like that because once again you're showing that you know people can 
you know, behave a certain way, leave, you know, try somewhere else, strike out and come back and everything's for off is forgiven. So, um, yeah, that's my take. I'm not so, I'm not so down on it like you are though, because, you know, he, he fulfilled his con- contract, um, you know, he jobbed on the way out. You know, he was involved in some pretty rotten storylines. Okay, he was he was phoning it in for the last couple of months, but you know, I, I can't remember him talking badly about Impact. In fact, I can't remember him talking about it at all. Um, so you know, I would have no problems with him coming in. As you say, I'd I'd like to see him maybe come in and you know be in a program before he goes towards a title. But he has got name value, you know. Um, so you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset at all and i think the good thing about going across to wwe and failing is that he you know it's it's an itch that's been scratched now so you know he wouldn't do that again so. i mean to be fair i mean gail kim gail kim did it too so i, I guess i kind of i get it i guess with just him when i was just thinking about you know even with him mailing it in it's like man like you you know it's a help be able to develop other people because I, I think that's always the biggest problem that we have sometimes with some of these stars is just like they never really have that person that's on the same role I mean same level as in to kind of feed off of so sometimes we get these feuds and it really doesn't even make sense because it's like one is far superior than the other so um I just never just kind of un- understood the idea when he was working in the mid card like he just he just seemed like you know he was just waiting to leave and stuff and like you said he honored his contractual obligations which is lovely but you just kind of just like to see somebody kind of go out and as a team player okay all right well we're, we're running out of time you know we do try and keep these shows for about half an hour i, I don't rush things but I, I do want to go through maybe some of the the, the signings that have come in and the storylines that are going on those kind of things so i just want i suppose a very quick look at some of the, the guys that are coming in just tell me if you think they've been a success whether if their contracts was up tomorrow would you keep them around so I, I'm going to start with a controversial one because it was a it was a guy who I really liked when he came in, and since then I just find him as dull as dishwater now, and that's Willie Mack. What, what do you reckon? What's your take on Willie Mack? I mean, I think he has a place. Um, they're just going to have to find a way to kind of get him away from the whole rich OVE thing, I guess, for the time being. That's good for him, but I think he could be somebody that I mean, we don't have a mid card, so. He's somebody, if they wanted to have him work, work in the main event, some might be able to do it. I see some potential there. I, see, I, I just don't think he's got any character or, or charisma that, that, that can get him to that main event slot. Now, he's a big dude and he can move and, and those kind of things. So f- from a wrestling ability, you could believe that he could carry the belt. But he, he screams mid-card to me. That's it. Just mid-card is his ceiling. I can't see anything above that. So, So for me... I don't think he's adding anything, and if anything, he's making the storyline with Rich Swan a bit more boring. I just don't like him. I'm sorry to say. Sorry, Willie. I'm sure I'll be interviewing you in two weeks, and I'll have to backtrack on everything I've said. But yeah, sorry about that. Um, so, uh, anyone else who's well, anyone else has grabbed your attention on the on the roster who you think actually they haven't been in the main event yet, but they they should be. They're the next guy. You know, it's hard to really get a pulse because really, I mean, <clears throat> it's got to disqualify it. I really thought Killer Krill- Cross was going to be it. And I know it probably sounds premature because we still don't know. But I just feel, you know, his first go around, you know, when he's still kind of building his name and impact and then they uh, paired him with Austin Aries. You know, I didn't understand why, but I got it. You know, he was still relatively new. And then now we see, and I'm not saying they're pairing him with Johnny right now, but I feel like now that Johnny's, I guess the de facto top hill, it makes Killer Cross kind of just fall in the background. So I, I really thought Killer Cross was next in line. I think he still will be. I, I think he still will be, but I think it's just maybe too soon. They've got to let the Brian Cage, Johnny storyline play out. And um, yeah, so I, I think that he will be a star of the future. And for, from the interview I did, he, he seems to be really enjoying himself, what he's doing. And, and, and he's always very pro, uh, you know, impact and also he stays in character on twitter and things talking of uh, people taking feuds to twitter etc eli drake um who has once again been in the news talking about he just doesn't understand why people uh feud on twitter it doesn't put bums in seats it you know it, he, he's old-fashioned and he's going to do all his stuff in the ring on the mic so eli drake uh, is he going to be here in six months time 
I don't believe so. I I think by well in the next couple months, I, I I'll put it like this. I say at the pay per view, that's probably the last. Maybe the pay per view and maybe the that week of tapings. I think that's the last we see Eli. Yeah. So it then brings us down to if we're getting rid of Eli, we are very very light on faces, aren't we? Uh, I, I know he's not a face; he's a kind of a heel. But Eddie Edwards is it's about the only face in the company at the moment, other than Brian Cage. I can't think of anyone else. Maybe Fowler. But other than that, anyone else you can think of in, in the company who could be that, that top baby face? I mean, it could be anyone. They just have to put them in positions of it. Like, I just always say, and I know some people, you know, were, are fans of it. Like, I didn't understand getting you know, turning Johnny Hill, like it didn't change anything. He's still corny as hell. I mean, what well, now he's a bad guy and he's corny. I mean, if anything, I find him worse now than when he was faced, like his mic skills didn't automatically change overnight now that he's a hill. So I really just thought with him, you know, you push him as the action star, you know, the guy that, you know, takes pictures with kids and all that corny stuff. Like that's fine. It's just, I don't know. I feel the thing with Impact sometimes with some of these faces is like they put them in the positions to fail where the only other alternative is to turn them heel to kind of save face. So when you've done that so much, like, you know, you're left with just Brian Cage and Brian Cage, he became face by default. You know, I would say even LAX, I still th- think LAX are still faces, but, you know, they're what led to their events weeks ago. We're supposed to assume they're heels, but I think the Lucha Brothers are more heels in this than LAX is, are. Yeah, so, you're right. You're right. I mean, it was weird, wasn't it? LAX still seemed like their faces, even though they took the masks of the Lucha Brothers, which is the heel, most heelish thing you can do. But I think they're still being booked as faces. It's, it's bizarre. That is really strange booking. It's just the way the way that they position position it, like the the people that they position as faces because even I I have this criticism of Brian Cage when he was going through the stuff with Johnny he wasn't doing anything that gave off the face impression like he was watching Johnny get beat up and he was just like okay cool normally a face would here fight him off like hey I want to be the one that beats you for the title you guys embrace etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's just sometimes the way they book their faces like you really don't know what you know but you know the one thing too I don't know why. We don't always going to need a face versus heel. We can do heel versus heel. Just like you can do face versus face sometimes. So I think when there's um, some of these characters, when there's no kind of clarification, just roll with it. And, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, you're quite right about not knowing how to book faces. I mean, look at Eddie Edwards. He uses a kendo stick to win these matches. He's more like <laughs> getting into that Eddie Guerrero type face, you know, of cheating to win. But anyway, it's strange because there isn't, as you say, a clean cut baby face. And I think the reason why is that Johnny Nitro, uh, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Impact was supposed to be um, that guy. And it just didn't work. It's tanked. Uh, so uh, who's the next guy that there isn't anyone unless they push the boat out and sign Eli? He could be the absolute top baby face. I can't see it being Eddie. I can't see Eddie carrying the company. I wouldn't like to see Eddie carrying the company. So after that, you're you're pretty limited um, because it's very, very heel heavy. So just looking at other places on the roster, you know, nearly everyone is, other than Rich Swan, uh, is, um, is, is a heel. And we got Madman Fulton now come in as well, another heel, mm-hmm. um, who looks interesting, by the way. Uh, but it's such a strange ace austin maybe he's a face the rascals maybe their faces but let's face it none of those are big guys who are going to be holding the heavyweight championship so it, it's a strange place on the roster at the moment and I, I think going back to why we've taken our hi- hiatus was that we were both a little bit disillusioned with the way things are going and and i just feel they kind of back themselves into a bit of a corner at the moment and they need to have a refresh uh, yet another refresh um and I don't know how they do it, other than pushing Eli to the front. Maybe a, a big loss has been KM if they do get rid of him. Although I believe he's on a paper appearance deal, um, and, and put you know the tag titles on them. You know, there's it, very very little that interests me at the moment, and I, I just want to see something different from them. It just seems like they're going through the motions at the moment. I just like I said, you know, my biggest frustration is they have the talent is just putting them in roles to succeed. And 
it's and it's not about just like our pushing the favorites and stuff. And I just I kind of go back to this because I know you touched on you thought Carla Cross wasn't too, uh, it was too early for him. Yet we see Jordan Grace being put in a position where I think it's safe to say she's probably going to win the title off of Taya. I'd be surprised not to. But she hasn't. She all she's really done has been mixing it up in the undead realm. So I really don't think. There's such thing in this company where it's like it's too early. I think you roll the dice, and a lot of times, more often than not, they fall in the stuff that just ends up working for them. So I just think, you know, just utilizing what you have and putting them in pl- places to succeed. As much as I want to believe Eli can be that guy, I really just feel like in, there was something Don had said, and I forgot it word by word, but I don't think Don was high on Eli. Like, you know, you keep him because he's under contract, but you just look at the way Eli is built. And a lot of us have always thought like, well, maybe, you know, maybe they can put him back. here. It doesn't seem there's no type of path to get him there. You know, he just keeps getting pushed further and further away. Every time we think that he's going to get there, there's something else. Like right now he's teaming with uh, Eddie Edwards. I could easily see him turning on Eddie and then they have a feud again. You see, and then that pushes him even further, further back. So it's just uh, the, the one thing I know they wouldn't do it, obviously, given what they have going on. But remember when WCW, um, <laughs> I think it was part of the latter, latter times where they had a thing where they scrapped all the champions and they had an event to to do uh, have new champions. So I had like different matches, tournaments or whatever. Mm-hmm. I would love to see something like that, only to see who are the people that, like, you know, the threats to the main event scene in the main event title picture, the threats for the X Division title, the threats to the Knockouts Championship, the threats to the Tag Team Championship, because we don't know who our contenders are. It's, there, it's not, it's, it's so random, like, we might get next week number one contendership match. Like somebody who's lost, you know, it could be the Desi Hit Squad versus Eli Drake and, and Eddie Edwards is the number one contendership. And it's like, what has Desi Hit Squad done to, you know, earn a, a number one contendership? So I just think we just need just with some of these characters, just kind of like um, they need, it, it need some. I don't know. I Overall, I just say like this, the identity of the company, I really just feel right now at this point. It's I don't know what it is. You know, I really don't. Yep. And I think you, you've hit the nail on the head, and that's was probably a good place to finish. Is uh, they, they do need to sort out their identity because I, I, I quite like the some of the things they're doing. You know, look, look at the rascal stuff. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that, but at least it's it's repeatable. They do it every week, and you get used to it. It's part of the show, and the same with the undead realm stuff. But then, you know, there's other bits of it which which totally feel you know an opposite ends of the spectrum compared to that kind of stuff so they just need to to find what they want to do and stick with it and build the show around that and at the moment they i think they're just drifting and um it, it, it is harming the product but anyway we've got another set of tapings that have just gone on uh that take a place now actually uh let's hope that some clarity comes out and and hopefully at the end of these tapings we don't see madison rain up on the turnbuckle holding up the belt Oh, please go. <laughs> hey, I wanted to ask you something real quick before we close out. Just your opinion. Since Rosemary's been back, what have been your thoughts? Um, well, we haven't really seen much of a wrestle, and it's always been in <laughs> in darkened arenas. Uh, I'm guessing, you know, that's obviously playing into the kind of gimmick, but uh, she's been fine. Um, I, I think to some extent she's been hampered by having this demon bunny thing this pseudo lesbian relationship with, with Ali. Um, and I think it's kind of harmed her character a bit. And I'd like to see that once Ali has gone, that she goes a bit darker again, <laughs> dare I say, turn a heel. Um, <laughs> Cause we say that about everyone. We just said there's not enough faces and I'm saying turn a heel. So uh, she's been all right. But then again, I never, I, I'll be honest with you. I never really rated her as that much of a wrestler anyway. But that never bothered me, not in the same way Ali did, because Rosemary was all about character as opposed to what she could do in the ring. She was fine mm-hmm. in the ring, by the way. She, not bad like Ali, I felt, was. So well, what, what would you make of her? Have you been disappointed with her return? No, 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 not at all. I um, was just thinking, I know I forgot to mention her, because she would probably be probably the main, like, the main person that she could always have as a viable threat to the knockouts title. But what I worry with her coming off of that injury, like her importance and stuff will she be able to go like how she was able to go in the past because an acl injury especially in wrestling and stuff it slows down a lot of people sometimes so i'm just kind of just wondering you know like i said it's still early but, but she, i'm wondering 
if that injury will slow her down where, you know, it might make some of her, it might drag some of her matches. Like you said, I know it's never been about her wrestling, but just the presentation of it all. Yeah. So yeah. I just kind of just wonder, <laughs> my bad, I'll just say, yeah. I just kind of wonder if that injury will kind of hamper her. But she was never a, a big, you know, mobile unit anyway, was she? You know, not in the same way that you see Tessa running around the ring or Ali or something, uh, not Ali, um, Kira. Uh, so I, I don't think it will impact her that much. But, you know, you could very easily, you know, as soon as Ali has disappeared, however they write her off, I don't know. Uh, but once she's disappeared, they could very easily just randomly throw Rosemary into the mix and say, we never had our red wedding match, you know, that they were due to have. Uh, before the visa problems with Tyre originally. So they could easily quite easily go back to that feud, although Tyre's a very different character now. You know, it, it still doesn't mean they can't bring that, that feud back instantly. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see. All hey, right. and I never got I, I never got to tell you. Remember and you, you thought I was wrong and I mean obviously we got a different thing, but remember I told you I said we we're gonna get a pay per view closing out with the husband and wife raising their titles <laughs> and we got that at homecoming. <laughs> I told you. That, 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 that's why I took the hiatus. I couldn't face you you rubbing it in my face. I'll, I'll be I'll be back in another two years now. Right. Um all right folks, that that's it for this week. Uh hope you've enjoyed the return show. Uh oh, our homecoming if you like. Um and we'll we'll hopefully be back a bit more regularly now. Uh obviously Ro and I are very busy people as as uh, as you are the listeners and we'll do our best to get something out on the air. So keep listening to Trend and Carl, keep tuning into the Impact Lounge. We'll do these interviews now and again and we'll try and get the Adam and Road show up a bit often. And don't forget to answer the trivia question, which is, uh, what did MVP and Drew Galloway's debut have in common? There you go. That's the trivia question for this week. And finally, uh, leave your comments below. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you all next week. <laughs>